我们这个古斯桑坡，今朝是我们帕吉亚巴卡巴，三的三台巴瓦纳，特雷法，吉拉哈瓦伊。Hope you're all well. It's now、uh, early September, and spring has started down here in Melbourne, in Australia. And a lot of people are going out more, bushwalking, hiking, fishing, canoeing, gold prospecting, bird watching, school camps in the outdoors, scouts and girl guides. It's the end of the snow season, so there's still people going up around the mountains if there's any snow left. So basically, people going in the outdoors more and more. Because it's nicer weather, it's warmer, it's not so cold and miserable, which makes sense. So now I've got a couple of channels. I've got this YouTube channel as well as the Facebook channel, and to be honest, I do post the same video to both channels. But I noticed on my YouTube channel, I haven't posted a video on.、Um, Being prepared in the outdoors, I just scrolled down my my feed on the YouTube channel, and the only other one which is close is independent thinking. But this is more being prepared <clears throat> in the outdoors. If you go out, go for like a picnic or a, or a two-day bushwalk, or if if your children go out on a I camp over the weekend, or with the scouts, or you know stuff like that. So I want to talk about that and <clears throat> being prepared. So I know I do tend to ramble on, but just bear with me, people. Okay. Obviously, we live in a so-called modern society with our luxury. Compared to camping and living in a tent, our homes are quite li luxurious. We got hot and cold running water on tap. We got an electric stove. We got heaters or gas appliances. We got a kettle. We got a toaster. We got central heating. We got insulation. We've got our own pantry with our food and fridges and cupboards. We got a supermarket market down the road. We got a telephone. We've got the internet. We've got our own bed and pillow and warm duna. So when you go out into the outdoors, it's a complete contrast to when you're living at home in in、um, in the suburbs or in the cities. So when you do, even if it's a half day bushwalk. You got to take a bag, a day bag. Now this is my day bag, okay. And in that bag, I've got various things which are for either comfort or safety or security, okay. Anything from a a fold-out handsaw. To a compass, to a notepad and pens, condoms, string, a compass. I always carry a personal locator beaker on me, beacon on me.、Um, I've got a couple of tins of tuna, muesli bars, a torch, cigarette lighter, matches,、uh, handheld mirror. I've got a water purification straw. Um, I've got effervescent tablets. I've got a garbage bag. I've got some bathers, some you know dick sticker bathers.、Um, so I want you to carry those sorts of items with you. I don't care if it's like a three-hour bushwalk in the bush. You should take a bag like that all of the time. Including wearing a personal locator beacon. Like I'm, I'm here in a, a state forest or, or a national park, 
It's only about 50 k's east of Melbourne, but it's a national park and there's a, a river here, you've got bird life, you've got kangaroos, there's a local uh, a toilet block close by, but when you go off the beaten track, when you go walking, for e even if it's a half hour walk one way, anything's possible. A, a kangaroo could jump out at you, you could twist an ankle, you could get disorientated, you might not have, ha have had a, a full breakfast and you're feeling woozy, you might get a sixth sense of you being watched and you and uh, you might turn around and walk the other way. Um, a rainstorm might come. Um, a fellow bushwalker might, might be bitten by a snake or, 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 or a leech on, on their ankle. I mean, when I was a kid, I, I had a leech fall out, must have been up high in a tree. Uh, this is before I wore glasses and the leech actually latched on to my eyeball, okay? And I was screaming and yelling, something's in my eye and I was trying to rub my eye, but I couldn't get off, it was sucking my eyeball. And um, my father at the time, he ended up grabbing a, a lighter and my, my mum, she was big on sewing and knitting and she had knitting in, in the car or something. But anyway, what happened, my dad got his cigarette lighter, lit the end of a pin, you know, a, a pin from sewing, heated it up and gently prodded close to my eye, holding my head still and was pushing the pin towards my eye to get the leech off. So you have to think, think of things like that. One minor thing can totally ruin your day. So having a pin, having a sewing kit and a cigarette lighter can, can, can save you, can, can save your day, okay? Something minor is a leech or an insect bite, let alone a twisted ankle or, or, or a drowning or getting lost and walking around in circles or even being attacked by a, a wild dog or coming across a yowie. These things are possible. And the further out you go, away from a main town, a big city, the more susceptible you are and the more at, at risk you are. So you have to be even more prepared. You might want to take maps of the area in your day bag. Obviously, you're going to notify people where you're going and for how long for. Obviously, you, hopefully, you're going to carry your mobile phone as well as having a backup battery and cord with you to charge your phone. Bear with me. So, so here's my... Hang on, I've got lots of stuff. Where's my battery? It's in the other section. Bear with me. Bear with me. Even things like insect spray and string, maybe a pair of shoelaces, a mini first aid kit. Where's my battery gone? Okay, here, here it is. So if you've got a phone, take, and I'm sure most of you have got one of these, this is Comsol. You charge it up at, at home and it lasts like 20 hours. But make sure you, you take the right cord as well. I've got an iPhone, so make sure you have the appropriate cord to plug into your phone, okay? So if your phone does go flat, you can at least recharge it and have a mobile phone for like a good two or three days or even a week if you're lost. You can, you can use your phone in any emergencies. You might be lost on a low-lying area and you want to get up high to, to, to a 
the top of a hill so you might save your battery of your phone because it could be a fair hike up depending on where you are. So you might save battery power, turn off your phone, climb to the top of a hill, turn on your phone again um, and then dial triple O or 911 or whatever it is or press the emergency button and do it that way. So all I'm saying is um, have a, a bag, a basic bag with basic um, contents to, to help you. Even things like wet wipes or a pair of gloves if you need to cl cling on to rocks or climb up a side of a hill. Okay, or even if you have to sleep out, sleep overnight, a pair of gloves can, can keep you warm. Okay, little things like that. I've also got a pair of scissors, a texter, a comb, notepads, plastic bags. I've said condoms before, condoms are good to carry water with. I've even got a larger plastic bag. This isn't too large, but at least if, I, if I'm, say, crossing a river, I can put that bag into this and everything inside my other bag will stay warm. I've also got a, a larger, uh, it's like a 72 litre bag as well, garbage bag. Um, and that has got multiple uses, okay. Even if you have, I mean, bags, you can carry firewood, you can carry water. If you have to sleep overnight, um, you can crawl into a plastic bag. So there isn't insects and, and leeches and spiders or worms crawling around your, your genital area. So you might put your legs in it and the bag might come up to here and grab a rope or a couple of shoelaces and join that plastic bag together. At least then if you're sleeping overnight under bracken, under twigs and under leaves, if you don't have a tent, at least you won't at least it'll keep you warm, it'll keep you dry, and insects won't crawl all, all over you and up your anus or anything like that. All right? So just have a, a mindset of being prepared and what to carry and what to take. Check the weather before you go. Let people know where you're going. Try and suss out the terrain if there's where, where there might be a river, where there might be a homestead or a farm in the vicinity, where there's a main road or even a dirt track out which you can signal down a traffic or a farmer on his tractor if you do get lost. So little things like that, okay? Do a little bit of homework before you do set off. Also worthwhile taking your medications if you're, say, a diabetic or, you know, um, headache tablets, um, throat lozenges, band-aids, sunburn cream, okay, essential oils, a lot of essential oils like lavender, tea tree and eucalyptus. They're antifungal, antiviral, antiseptic, um, you know, essential oils. So if you do get stung by a bee or bitten by an ant, you can put a couple of drops onto that wound or sunburn or burnt from a fire or after you, you, you flick it off, off, off a leech, okay, or even attacked by a magpie, you might be bleeding. You might clean that wound with like lavender oil and then put, put up um, a band-aid over the, the top or even a, a t-shirt and, and wrap a t-shirt around if it's a major bleed with, a, with a, a belt or even a shoelace. So multiple things can, can do multiple tasks. So think shelter, fire, food, warmth, security, first aid, 
You know, you might think of learning to, to swim a few months before you, you set off on, on your camping trip. You might want to learn first aid, book, bushcraft, um, learn knot tying, learn how, how to purify water, okay? And even when you're buying products like a, a water purification straw, this is mine, it's called a life straw. You suck up the water from there and that's your mouthpiece and you, you dunk it into a river or you dunk it into a bowl of water. Uh, make sure that these filters are quite fine so make sure if it's very contaminated water and it's murky or there's a lot of sticks or you know leaves or mud purified first through like a t-shirt or through a coffee filter um, or even through your 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 spare pair of bathers purify the water and then use your your straw um, and then you'll you'll have pure or relatively pure water without the uh, the uh, the actual harsh contaminants from the the river okay or even boil your your water beforehand okay um, and even with regards to water it's always good to have a, a supplement energy drink um, like this is called hydrolyte it's a effervescent tablet i can just put one of these into my bottle of water and it's a bit of a energy kick okay so if i'm low on food and i've only got water left from a river at least you will be able to survive for for quite a number of days just by drinking water and and an energy drink we can go without food for quite a long time but we we cannot go without water for more than three days and dehydration we, 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 we only feel dehydration once we are in the in the middle of becoming dehydrated so always sip water constantly okay you only feel de dehydration and woozy once it's really started to, to, to like kick in so always drink constantly, especially in, 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 uh, during hot, hot weather and dry, drier climates. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. It's gone for like 20 minutes already. So that's my, my day pack, um, similar to like a, a bug out bag. Uh, so if I need to flee my home, for example, if there's a bushfire or a flood or or some emergency going on, that's the first bag I take, okay? And you know, even in the boot of my car, I've got bottles of water and toilet rolls and a blanket and tarpaulins and tent bags as well. So I don't have to worry about grabbing things like that if I do need to, to rush out, if it's a, a uh, emergency. Uh, like a bushfire and a need to leave my home but what I'm talking about today is bushwalking or short camping trips always carry what, uh, a backpack or a shoulder bag with things like that a water purification straw a couple of tins of food compass condoms a cigarette lighter da 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 all right so I'm gonna leave it at that it's a very simple video um, and obviously do your own research, you can Google bug out bag, you can Google day pack and see what other people are carrying in their day pack. You can add, you can take away, you can create your own. You might have a larger first aid kit compared to mine. Like I always carry a nail file and tweezers and scissors, you know. It's up to you what you put into it but as I say even if it's a three hour bushwalk take it along with a, 
a personal Lycaga beacon and even a whistle a whistle on your your house keys car keys carry a whistle little things like that it doesn't it's not a great deal of weight it's two dollars it's always permanently attached to you and then you're fine all right all right so you be good you be safe and um, get get starting create create a bag it's well worth it okay even if if I mean you might not even use it you know four out of five trips but that fifth trip or that tenth trip you will be you you will be amazed how much um, you will be thankful for even having a cigarette lighter to start a fire to to signal to an aircraft or carrying a handheld mirror okay or wearing bright clothing or having a long piece of string okay these little things add up and can be very very helpful and might actually save your life or someone else's life all right you take care you be good you be safe and i'll talk to you guys and girls later see ya